everybody. Welcome. How are you? Hope you're having a great day. So I just finished up a react to Amberlyn Reed. Uh, she had a very short video, so I decided to do the react to her first. She did a short video insisting that girl world has ruined her life and she wants to quit YouTube, but yet she can, blah, blah, blah. So I reacted to that one and posted it on YouTube. And now I'm on to Chantal. And I saved the react to Chantal for last because she did a three hour live stream. So the react to Chantal was going to be longer than the one to Amber. Although I do have some good news for those who are subs to my channel. I am making an executive decision. Just because Chantal streamed for three hours in a live doesn't mean I'm going to react to every single minute of that live stream. I peeked at it. I did look, and the first hour, there really wasn't anything good happening. There was nothing react-worthy. She was eating a bunch of food, and she was being boring. So in my react, I'm deciding that we're going to start about an hour into the live stream. So instead of three hours of footage, let's just cut out the first hour altogether and talk about this second and third hour. And if we have to jump around because it gets too boring, we'll do that too. Because if it's boring, it's boring. And there's nothing real that you can do with Chantal. So I'm going to get into all the Twitter stuff. And there isn't a whole lot to cover with Twitter just because I did a react to Amber and covered a lot of stuff during that react. And now we're on to Chantal. But there is a few things that I'd like to show all of you before we get into reacting to Foodie. So why don't we just go ahead and get into it. I've already got Twitter all pulled up and ready. And then after that, we'll go directly into her live. And like I said, we're not starting at the beginning. There's really no need. She's just saying hi to everybody and she's eating a bunch of food. And I am so not here to watch her eat. I'm so not here for that. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to think about it. Let's just cut that part out if possible. So, okay. Going on to the Twitter stuff. And there's my Twitter. For anybody who wants to follow me on Twitter, there's my handle, Wild Girl Sarah. Let's start here with a post courtesy of Lime Jello. Lime Jello says, Chantal says she got two seven-layer burrito meals, buy one, get one free, for herself because the burritos are small, plus nachos and fiesta potatoes, ma'am. That's not small, but eat up, Chantal. So let's look at the pictures. Those are not small burritos, and she ate two of them. Do I believe they had a buy one, get one free deal on the burritos? No. I have never heard of that in my life, that a burrito place is saying, buy one and we'll give you an extra one free. She's just saying that to make it seem like she got a good deal, that she's a smart shopper. But I believe she had to buy both of them. But, but here's Chantal going ham with the food. You guys can see that those are not small burritos. Even as large as her hands are, they're not small. They're pretty big. I mean, I, I, I probably couldn't even eat half of one of those, much less two. But yeah, you're, you're right, Lime Jello. That those are not small. She just wants a reason to go extra ham on the food because we know who she's catering to when she does her videos and her lives anymore. And it's not to the regular viewers of YouTube. Okay, it's DX. DX does wonderful recaps of what's going on in Chantal's lives and videos. Uh, DX does the recaps, and this is part of the recap for the live. DX says, uh, I'm going to KMS Salah, just came in with a sugary mocha for Chantal. She's smiling nervously as she pushes her straw into the cup. So for those that are not aware... <laughs> Chantal ate a crap ton of extra large donuts. Uh, we know that. She was bought a whole bunch of donuts. 
They were a bit stale because she bought them at midnight. So, of course, they're going to be a little bit stale. But she ate all of them. On top of that, she ate a whole bunch of Reese's peanut butter cups. Uh, she had a whole pan of brownies. Now she's got a mocha. She's also got these burritos. I'm, I mean, look, what is there to say about her diet? What could I say that hasn't already been said a million times by me and other people? Her diet is horrible. Her blood pressure and her blood sugar are completely out of control. She's on different medications, several different medications. There is the possibility that she is abusing her meds and abusing her insulin so she can eat ridiculous amounts of food. She might be playing around with the amounts of things to see what is needed to continue these B moments. She's doing all this stuff and there's not a single thing that anybody on YouTube or the internet can do to stop her. There's not a thing we can do. We can watch her content. We can comment on what she does, but none of us can stop her from her being her own worst enemy. You know, we're just here to report on the news. We're not here to interfere in the story. And I have heard that when you're a diabetic, that high blood sugar will make you hungrier. I've also heard that when you take insulin, it can perhaps also make you hungrier, which can lead to weight gain. And that's a double whammy to Chantal. She's already got this intense problem with food that is completely unchecked. So add in the insulin effects, add in the blood sugar effects, and the bee monster is essentially Godzilla at this point. Uh, okay, so DX says, yep, she fully live streams herself injecting insulin into her belly. Why would you do that? Why do people need to see that? Uh, doesn't wash her hands and then literally throws the used needle behind the camera. Oh, that's incredibly safe. There's a cat in the house. Chantal, if you're going to inject yourself with anything, take the used needle and put it somewhere safe where the cat can't get to it, dummy. Uh, Langello says, holy crap, literally stuffs her face all day with the unhealthiest food since being diagnosed with diabetes. When are your diabetes classes and obesity clinic appointments, cutie? She can't handle the truth. So you guys, here, here, look. Let me show you the pictures. This is one of the mukbangs that she recently posted. I looked at it. Again, there was nothing comment-worthy, nothing react-worthy about it. It was just Chantal sitting down to have her meal. And at first, I couldn't even tell what this meal was. To me, it looked like grilled cheese. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like anything, but that's what she had for one of her mukbangs. And then she did the live where she had not just a brownie, but a whole pan of brownies. And you got to know that that whole pan of brownies is going to be nerfed by midnight. They're all going to be gone. And then she'll make another pan and eat that pan too. So tell me again, Chantal, how being in Kuwait is good for you. I, I just, I can't see it. I don't know about it. It makes no sense. Nana Spike T says, so how is this how it all goes now? Salah gets to play with his friends as long as he allows Foodie to eat all the junk she wants. What a life. What a marriage. Keep living a lie, cutie, and keep shoveling it in. More proof Salah is just using your dumb self. I think they're using each other. I mean, Chantal did say it herself that even if Salah wanted to stop her, he can't stop her. She's the one making the money. How can he tell her no to her spending the money that she makes? It'd be a whole different ball game if he were making the money and she wanted to spend it on food. Then he would have more of an authority stance, but he doesn't. Chantal is an out of control person, but she always maintains control of the money. So if she wants a million Nashies, or a million burgers from Burger King or McDonald's. Can he say no to her? No, not really. He has to let her do what she wants to do. He has to. 
And Chantal, I can't believe how stupid you are that you haven't figured out by now that not only is the food problem running your life, not only has the food issue consumed you and taken completely over and is basically be behaving as a puppet master to your life, but you put people around you that they also take advantage of the fact that you have this issue and they find ways to work it to their advantage. Like, oh, she's got this issue with food, but as long as it keeps her happy and, and it keeps me getting a paycheck, I don't care what she does. The people that you surround yourself with, they can be indifferent to you. And because you're so busy focused on your food issue, you're not even looking at that. Like you're happy to monetize your issue. And then you put people around you that they're very happy to put you and your addiction to work for them. You think you're in control, but you're not. The addiction is in control and other people around you can see that it's in control and they can figure things to where it works for them too. They get what they want, just letting you be a food addict and not getting in the way. And they don't care what happens to you physically, mentally, emotionally, as long as they profit, they will not stand in your way. And if something were to happen to you and you're no longer on this earth, they won't shed a tear, but they're going to hang on to you. And they're going to make use of you and your problem as long as it benefits them and as long as they can. Okay. Truth Seeker says, is Salah with his other wife? Because he sure isn't there. So yeah, Chantal did this. She walked all through the house. And clearly Salah is not there. Clearly he isn't there. And... People are basically saying that that spare room is actually her bedroom because a lot of her stuff is in there. And I did see like a brief view of the couch. I saw a pillow on the couch and I saw a blanket. So it appears that that spare room is actually her bedroom. I don't know if there's an actual bedroom bedroom in the place, but isn't it funny that she's the one paying the bills? She's the one paying the rent. And she gets a smaller room. She gets put in a spare room. <laughs> that is funny to me. That is so funny. That's hilarious. Okay, that's it for all the Twitter stuff. It didn't take long. Didn't take long at all. So let's go on to the actual live stream. And like I said, we're, we're starting in about an hour in. Because that, that's when some interesting things start to happen. One moment, y'all. Okay, let's keep going. I just had to turn on the light because the light's starting to disappear in here. And I want to make sure there was enough so I'm not in the dark. But let's get going with Miss Chantal. Right, he said... Squeak! He said we eat. Thank you, Kina. Put him in, no, I can't put him in the playpen right now. He had playpen time earlier. Because, you know, I'm kind of confused about the playpen situation. I know that is for the hamster, but the hamster is not out all the time. So is there no way to fold that playpen thing up in between the play sessions? Julia's here. The third Howie, whatever. Wow. He is the first and only Howard. No, he's not. My pajamas are on. Okay, guys. And that's something I'm noticing a lot about her lives and her videos anymore. It's She's always in her freaking pajamas. Is that for the adult baby people fetish thing, Chantal? Why are you always in your pajamas? Did I show you my drawer full of stuff? See, and you know what? <laughs> Chantal... You yell at girl world and you say, I don't have a private life. But here you are in your bedroom and you're about to show us what's in your drawers. <laughs> we didn't ask. 
We're not forcing you. This is something that you're doing on your own. So because you're doing this on your own, don't yell at girl world. If we comment on the things that you by choice choose to show us. Give us a room tour. There's not really much. There's this bed here. Okay. So that's the shot. That's what I saw. So there's all this stuff from Chantal on the dresser. And you guys can see behind you that couch. It looks like it's a place where somebody sleeps. There's the pillow propped up. And then there's a blanket right beside it. That looks like the place where she sleeps. Here. There's the desk. Like there's all kinds of stuff in that room that pertains to Chantal. They're calling it a storage room. I think it's her actual bedroom. And it kind of looks like the, the villa bedroom back in Canada too. It's very messy. So, yeah. There's just like old, like old furniture in here. So like our old bedroom set, basically. <laughs> um, when we got the new bedroom set, we just moved it into here. So. So hold on a second. Are you telling me Chantal that the new bedroom set, that's where Salah sleeps and the old stuff is what you got and you're the one paying for it. Oh, I love that for you. Um, that's pretty much the tea on that. It's not very, I, I mean, I want to fix it up. So I don't know. There's not room for a couch and a bed in here. So we're going to have to get rid of one of them. I'm thinking the bed, maybe donate it or something, or I don't know. You recognize the wardrobe? Chantal, where are your glasses? You, your vision is not that great. Do you see what's on my face? I have reader glasses on. Why? Because my eyes are not that great. I need reader glasses to see. If I take my, okay, I'm taking my glasses off right now. Like I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at people that are talking in your chat. I can see the words and I can make up make out the words by the shape of the letters but i can't see them clearly but if your eyes need help they need help you need to be wearing your doggone glasses so why aren't you wearing them you just you know you scrunch your little face up to the screen why aren't you wearing your glasses <clears throat> what do you mean eileen there's no blue couch. No, we got rid of that. I think he gave it to a friend who wanted it. Why would anybody want that blue couch? <laughs> the condition I'm sure that it was in, why would anybody want it? I don't think anybody would want a stained couch. A couch has seen things and it knows things it's not supposed to know. Yeah, there's a green screen. Deep River, yes, vaguely Golden Girl. It's like near Sudbury, no. Vaguely, somewhere in Ontario. Why, what about it? Hi. No, you're not jumping up here. Get out of here. Nice, Chantal. I love the way you're holding on to that water bottle. It kind of looks like a baby bottle. Are you catering to a certain fetish, ma'am? Yeah, I want to make a nice room out of it. Exactly. Stop whining about the mods. Would I ever dress up like Howie? I, I can look like him. You big man! People think you're a replacement, Howie. That's not true. Oh, he's in his pee corner. Oh, my gosh. Look, he's going to pee in his pee corner. Why do we need to see that? I don't want to see the hamster taking a pee. That's kind of rude.
Let's try the aloe nicotinamide moisturizing mask. Okay. So, I mean, I'm going to pre-warn you guys, like this live stream, it was just a collection of different boring, bizarre little things that Chantal was doing to run up the meter. It, it wasn't about entertaining people. It wasn't about doing something interesting to get everybody engaged and get everybody talking or even get the reactors talking. It was Chantal just looking at the date saying today is the 30th and tomorrow is the 31st and the YouTube Google AdSense pay period will be up in about 48 hours. So I'm going to grab at every dime, dollar, nickel and penny that I can from Google AdSense by doing an extra long stream. Although I'm not going to do much in it. I'm just going to find stupid little things to occupy my time. Things that are really not interesting to anybody and expect to get paid. You know, she's on live stream and she's about to put on a facial mask and badly, I might add. Let's go. Should I try it? Let me push it as back as I can without showing my receding hairline. Okay. Why do I have so many sofas? Free Howie. Put him in his playpen. I mean, that's a fair question. Why do you have so many sofas? It's not like you guys have parties there every day. You could take out one of those sofas, put it in a treadmill, and get yourself together. I have to kick Julia out then. Ew! It's like, ew! It smells like clinic. Okay. What? What? How do you do this? I don't get it. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Chantal, how did you make it this far in life? There's directions right on the box. Do you not have a phone? You can go online and Google how to use a facial mask. I mean, it just, you know what? I think you know how to put on a facial mask. It's just that you're playing dumb for the sake of the camera. Just to make extra money to get the reactors talking, but do you really think we're going to rage over a facial mask, girl? Come on. Oh. I see. So you go like this. <laughs> it's cold. You know, this is giving me, I want to do a really long live stream but I don't know what to say and I don't know what to do to entertain people, to keep them talking to me for three hours. It's giving me those kind of vibes. It's giving me the vibes of it's the end of the month. I really need the money. I got to keep people in alive for X amount of time, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to just entertain people and talk to people for that long and keep them engaged. So I'm just gonna do stupid things that make no sense. Oh. <laughs> it's freezing. What the heck? I am Batman. <laughs> yes, I'm here for the job interview. <laughs> Jason, hold on. You got to take it off the plastic or what? So she, kn she knows what to do. She can't possibly be this stupid. To leave it on for 15 minutes. I can't even leave it on for 15 seconds. Oh, that's because you're doing it wrong. It's gross. Look at it. I look like friggin' leather face. I'm going to wear your skin. And I bet she didn't even wash her face before she put that mask on. <laughs> and you know what, Chantal? This is where having a female friend would come in handy. You don't know how to adult 
and you just don't know how to do feminine things. But if you had a female friend, perhaps they could help you. But <laughs> you're just too doggone feral for your own good. There we go. Hmm. All right. Make me look young. Yeah, no, there's no mask in the world that can do that, Chantal. Sorry. And youthful like Snow White. Is there a tissue here? <clears throat> Why do you want to see the bed? It's just a bed. It's not a bed, though. That's a couch. Am I wrong? I mean, if, if I'm wrong, somebody point out that I'm wrong. But that doesn't look like a bed to me. That looks like a couch. The last time I saw it before all the crap was in front of it, it's basically like a, like a love seat of sorts. I mean, she could use it as a bed, but it's a couch. We just keep, like, extra things in here. A vacuum. There's Harry's food. Howie. And don't you think I think it's telling that she's over here doing this arc on YouTube. Like this guy is my husband. He loves me so much. But yet, where is she sleeping? That is her room. <laughs> You're practically a newlywed with Salah. And girl, you're sleeping in the spare room on a small couch that can't possibly fit the both of you. Doesn't really scream happy marriage to me because if it were a happy marriage, your husband would have you in bed next to him at night. And if that meant getting a California king size mattress or a king size mattress, if you're really in love, you do what you got to do to be close to your wife or to your husband. So if your butt is in the spare room and that's your bedroom, he's, he's not that into you. And y'all are not knocking boots. No, you're not. Potato face. Can you say, hey, guys? Hey, guys? Should do face masks together? Slimy masks. Ooh, they're gross, yeah. <laughs> she is beauty. She is grace. She has slimy aloe all over her face. Ew, I know the swishy sounds, Zaya. <sighs> Why is she breathing heavy? She's not doing anything. You like the comforter? Thank you. Hey, Iona. You got to be more organized. I know that's not organization is like not me at all. <laughs> at all. Okay. She's getting a bit boring with the face mask on. Okay. So here she is. She took off the face mask. She's wiping it all off. And then directly after the face mask, she's going to put some makeup on. <laughs> and I don't know what made her think that this was a good idea. But the color of foundation is not a good color for her. Uh, Chantal's skin tone is, she's got a cool skin tone. It's very, very pale. There are different tones to skin. There's warm, there is cool. I would be considered like a warm skin tone. Uh, she's definitely a cool skin tone. Her, her skin is very pale. And yet the foundation that she's putting on has a like a beige, yellowish tint to it. And it doesn't look good on her. See skin? I think it's like Korean, maybe. Yes, I saw it on TikTok. Hi, Nikki D. I can't keep it on. No, I don't like these masks. I'm giving them away. To who? Who would take that stuff from you? Maybe Korean skincare. Glassy skin, yeah. She 
is beauty. She is grace. <sighs> I want to put makeup on, but I don't. And again, like, I, I don't think she want to put the makeup on because she want to make herself feel pretty or she had somewhere to go. It was just Chantal wanting to do a long live stream and not knowing what to do with herself. Like, like, what do I do now? I've got nothing planned. There's no topics that I want to talk about. I'm just struggling to find some way to keep people interested. See, that's the weird thing about what's going on these days with her and Amber. Like a lot of people are talking about the Amber Tommy situation and watching Chantal, especially in this live stream. Uh, if y'all remember recently, you know, she was jumping up and down on the couch like Tom Cruise. Uh, it, it goes beyond the usual, like doing the mukbang thing and then the seal thing. It's like she wants the spotlight back on herself, but yet she doesn't want to work to get the spotlight back on herself. If she said goodbye to Salah and decided to go back home and start over, she would get the spotlight at least a little bit off of Amber. But she has decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to stay in Kuwait and I'm going to be boring. And even though I see people are talking about Amber and Tommy, I, I, I don't want to work to get the crown back. I'm just going to let her have it, sort of, <laughs> you know, and I'm just going to do stupid things like this. Uh, to keep people interested, but they're not interesting. She has farts all over her face. Like nobody comes to Chantal's channel looking for makeup looks. Nobody comes to Chantal's channel looking for beauty tips or tips on how to do a proper facial mask or for cooking or none of that. But it's how she runs up the meter and eats up time for more ads. <laughs> Chemical burn, yeah, I don't want that. <sighs> yeah, speaking of facial masks, you know, like I know there are different masks out there, like you got the clay masks. The worst experience I've ever had with getting a mask is like the, like the clay mask. I don't know what was in it. I put it on though, and it did something to my skin. Like I, it, my face was completely red. It hurt so much. It burned like fire. Maybe it was an allergy reaction or something, but it just, my skin was way too sensitive. So I've never done it since then. And look, you, you guys can see the foundation. Let's blow it up for a minute. So Chantal's complexion is cool which is like an ivory tone to your skin. And she's putting on foundation that's meant for a warm toned face. And then what it's going to do is make her face look very beige-ish, yellowish in tone. Oh yeah, I forgot the mic is on, sorry. Yeah, but about that, Chantal, can you please take that little microphone and throw it in the trash? Not only is it horrible, but you always put it way too close to your mouth and you are a mouth breather. Like you got that heavy breathing for no random reason and it's just disturbing. Just move it away from your mouth. <laughs> is your beauty bl blender supposed to smell like wet dog? No. That means it's dirty and then it needs to be cleaned. Just like that palette of eyeshadow that you have. How old is that thing? You got money. Why aren't you buying new makeup? <laughs> oh. Did you see what she just did? She just sniffed the beauty blender. She said it smells like wet dog and then she sniffs it. She's so gross. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm choking. No, you're not. Look at my bags under my eyes. This is a new addition since I turned 40. It's all downhill from here. Yeah, what is going on with that, Chantal? You've got some huge bags under your eyes. Are you not getting proper sleep? Why are you staying up all night? What are you staying up all night for? Oh, that's right, to eat food. My bad. Sorry, I forgot. 
<laughs> this is wet and wild. Foundation. Retinol and touch the cream. Really? Oh, sorry. I keep forgetting I have the mic on. I have aloe in my nose. Stop looking at Harry. Howie. Okay, guys. What color should I do my eyeshadow? You need sleep. <laughs> yeah. Stop waking us up. I need to kick her out of the bedroom at night. Just open the door. Why is she in the bedroom with the door closed? I'm sure that if she... If she could get out, she would. Like, why is the door closed? Because she's just going to, you know. And why is she putting on all this makeup anyway? She's not going anywhere. So let's just sk skip ahead. Okay, so you guys can see the makeup look. I'm not going to torture you by making you sit through all this boring crap. Like, for what reason is she putting on all this makeup? Other than the fact that she's bored and she's running up the meter and she's looking for that Google AdSense money for a really bad makeup look. Really bad. You, got, you guys are looking at it. Look. Look. This is what it is. She's not even paying attention to the chat. And we're going to finish it off with lipstick. There we go. There's the look. There it is. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at the makeup. There you go. You know, you know, Chantal, I see what you're doing. You are trying so hard. To get the reactors to talk about you. You're trying so hard to get people to post things on Twitter about you. But you just didn't get the memo, did you? Did it not arrive at your doorstep? Did you not get it through the mail? The memo was, because I saw it. The memo was that we no longer care. You can search in all of our pockets. We have no more Fs to give you. We're all out. All the things you're doing, you've done before at least a thousand times. You're not shocking us. You're really not shocking us. This crap right now, there's nothing to talk about. So what? You put on some makeup. Big whoopee deal. deal. So what? Big deal. Who cares? You're looking all kinds of garish over there. And putting on the red hijab. For what? You're not going to rage. Okay, let's get out of this inferno of a room. Juice! What are you doing back here, Juice? Oh, God. She's doing the cat. Where? How long before I wipe it off? I give it one hour. The Madame of a brothel. Yeah, my makeup's dry. Like, my skin is dry AF. Maybe because it's old makeup. And it's not blended out because I don't have makeup brushes, but whatever. <sighs> Thanks, Sir a lot. You kind of look like a fortune teller. <laughs> Thanks, Aya. Six days from now, of course not. Uh, I, I mean, he's gonna see it. He's gonna be like, "What the?" He'll probably say, "Wow, it's beautiful." I have rose water actually. Yeah, take me. Out. I'm not going out in public like this. I'll probably get arrested. So Law's gonna see that makeup look and see the way you're dressed and think to himself, "What a gluttonous Charmut." <laughs> Some bronzer. Oh, too lazy. Oh, I'm stuck puppet. Yeah, I do have wine red eyeshadow, Vampira. I was trying to make it look like a joke. Mimi eyeshadow. Thank you, 
Weird Raw, 1980s. Yeah, I know SB, but they probably don't wear bright blue like this. No, you can go out. You can go out with makeup. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Bees a lot. You look like you want to steal my voice. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Now sing. I I want to go back to Thailand. Like no joke. No, you don't. <laughs> No, you don't. Why are you lying? Girl, you were in Thailand and you hated every single second of Thailand. You hated the weather. You hated the heat. You hated the rain. You didn't like people staring at you and whipping out their phones. You did not like Thailand. And not because there's anything wrong with Thailand. Thailand looks beautiful. It's just that you and your bad health. And you being public shy, you didn't want to be around people. And that place is full of people. You hated Thailand. What do you mean you want to go back? I'm sure Salah wants to go back to Thailand. I'm sure he had a whole lot of fun without her in Thailand. Yeah, he's going to come home and be like, what the hell? Or maybe the reason why she wants to go back to Thailand is because they have the green shops over there. Although I have heard that it's very, very soon, they're going to close all of those down. So maybe that's the reason why she wants to go back there. Her and Salah can go over there and smoke up a little bit and get giggly and stupid. And she gets her food on. Kamala or Donald? I would probably go with Kamala. Or Austin. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, Blue Pot. Eileen, I don't know. They don't cut the scenes in the Netflix. Shut down for rats. We could rent out a Thai villa. When are you going, uh, Issa P? I had... Um, I did a mukbang, Laura. I ate them yesterday morning. Sir Bees must be on my payroll. Yes, anybody who likes me, I must be paying. Yeah, speaking of Blue Pot, <laughs> like you guys know I react to Chantal, and I don't know what's going on with Blue Pot, but it's really interesting, really interesting. Like Blue Pot, Gets in the chat and gives Chantal hell. And yet Chantal won't ban Blue Pot. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. I think it's funny. Like there's a there's a couple of people that come in and they they just give it to her, and yet she won't ban them and she won't get rid of them. And today during the live chat, I believe it was Tracy that banned Blue Pot, and then Blue Pot came in on another name and and then got unbanned. Or something. It's just like it's, it's just weird, you know. Like it's very unchantal ish that if somebody comes in being critical, that she lets them stay. But a lot of people in chat love blue pots, so maybe that's it. <laughs> Thailand bees. Ah, next year. I want to go soon. I, I want to go soon. I want to go. I don't know. You can be on the payroll. No. I need to be on a payroll. I need a job. <laughs> Actually, I w I've been dreaming. Okay. I had the weirdest dream, and I have to tell you, because I have to share it with somebody. I had a dream that I had a... You know, whenever Chantal starts talking about her dreams, you automatically know that if her describing them takes more than a couple of sentences, they're fake. I mean, we are talking about a woman that could barely remember anything, but she can say her dreams in full-on detail. Lies. A little old 1993 Mitsubishi car. And 
um, I was driving in it and I was trying to find cigarettes. I don't even smoke cigarettes. So I was trying to find cigarettes. <sighs> Oh, here we go. Thank you, Borgo. Is it Borgos B? I'm probably saying the name wrong. Sorry. But this person B says Thailand is outlawing cannabis July 2025. You better get on it, Chantal. You better get on it. It sounds like uh, the window of opportunity to smoke up a little bit in Thailand is, is starting to close. Anyway, you had to be there. That's it. Can't Thailand is outlawing. Yeah, I know January. So if you want that, you have to go. You know what? If they outlaw that, they're going to lose so many tourists. There's so many people who go there for that reason. There's so many. The brownie. Ugh. I hope they do outlaw it in Thailand. Not because I want to get in the middle of somebody else's fun. But if Chantal is trying to avoid going back to Canada. And she's been like running over to Thailand real quick because she wants to get her smoke on. If Thailand outlaws that, then that means she'll have to go back home to Canada if she wants to get her smoke on. Oh, don't talk about food right now. Good grief. Oh, I think I need sleep. It's nine. It's ten. I could go to bed and be on a regular. You know what's going on here, y'all? Look, look. Dang it. I can't pull it all the way back. But during... I can't, I can't pull it all the way back, but she ate earlier in this live stream. She stuffed her face and right on time, Chantal, we're like an hour two of a three hour live stream. Y you know, you're starting to get the sleepies from the food that always happens with you. After you stuff yourself, your body starts to digest some of that food and it has to devote all of its energy and resources to digest that food because you know, digesting food does take a lot out of the body, especially an extreme amount. It makes you sleepy. You want to lay down. That's where all of your energy goes because you never stop eating. Regular schedule. I could. Yes. Oh, I look like a beanie. Oh, Pardonnez-moi. Could I make up? Like, there's no reason for her to be this tired. She doesn't do anything all day. She doesn't go anywhere. She should have more energy than all of us. But she has the least. Like she probably just woke up and ate that meal and she's already yawning. Yeah, I know a lot of people travel for the 420 there. Are you kidding? There's a lot of tourists that do that. It's a huge industry there. Huge. There's so many cafes in that we walked by. Oh my gosh. Really, Isuki? Thanks, Kim Richards. 8 p.m. there. <laughs> Bourgeois. No, I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go, but. I don't have a set sleep pattern. Being boring again. Some safe regions. You just gotta stay out of the ones that are dangerous. A huge camel farm in Abu Dhabi. I always use oud. Oud smells nice. Go to a resort or on a cruise, yeah. Next. When I sat up front with the limo driver. <laughs> Okay, I called shotgun because I knew she was going to puke the whole way home. And I was afraid people were going to barf. And I, you know, she's telling another stupid story. Tell you what, like, for some reason, I can't preview the window. Let me just go ahead and okay, let me just take note of where I'm at. It's understandable. You want to let loose when you go out. Here we go. <laughs> okay, and we're going to switch the chat back. All right, let's go. Tear drop me too. I can't stand it anymore. No, I, I don't like it. Honestly, like when I did, I don't know. I just, I don't know what to say. Like anymore, I don't like it. Tell us about Shannon's 
when I sat up front with the limo driver. <laughs> okay, I called shotgun because I knew she was going to puke the whole way home. And I was afraid people were going to barf. And I, you know what? I have like a journey, yes. the wheel in the sky. Thank you. I refuse to, to cover her like singing journey. I refuse to let her disrespect Steve Perry. Who had an amazing voice. No, I'm not going to let you get away with singing journey in my react, ma'am. No, thank you. <laughs> Breeze with white claw. Anime sucks. Yeah, gastritis. Yeah. I got to take my lipstick off. He's psycho. I wish I would have shown that, but I didn't switch the camera over. I kept it on me because it was really fast, but were you <laughs> team foodie? No, I wasn't on Coke actually. Oh, we're getting into the natter stuff. Okay. You, I got to roll it back. I got to roll it back. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's roll it back. I want to cover this part. Anime sucks, Copens I hope you swim again. It sucks knowing you have to wear your burqa in it because I no swimming with any kind of clothes, even shoes is hard. Get something nice to eat. Thank you, anime sucks. I like your name. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so generous of you. Thank you. <laughs> Breeze with white claw. Anime sucks. Yeah, gastritis. Yeah. I gotta take my lipstick off. I hate when she does that. <laughs> and Blue Pot being an instigator. <laughs> Blue Pot saying, I miss the old lies. We watched you roll around your filthy bedroom with various condiments. Ugh. I don't miss those days. I don't miss them at all. Where we watch you roll around your filthy bedroom with various condiments. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I have random paprika. There's a kitchen in that apartment. Why isn't the food and the spices in the kitchen? Why are they sitting right next to her? I don't like having a filthy bedroom anymore. Lies. You were just in your room, Chantal. That, that store's room did not look nice and neat and clean. It looked cluttered. What are you talking about? I hated having a bad, messy bedroom. I hated it. Lies. Lies. Can't believe a word you say. How many times did that bedroom get disgusting? And how many times did you call upon your mom, your mother, to come over and clean it for you? And then after it was clean, it would get dirty all over again. Miss, I hate my bedroom being messy. I don't know why I didn't take better care of my room. Because you're lazy and you're feral and you have no home training. I had a lot of cool stuff in there. Like what? <sighs> Can we retro react? You mean like me do a re retro react? What happened to all my stuff? Uh, if I'm being honest, I left just left a lot of it in the villa. I told the people they could have it. Um a lot of it I gave to my aunt, a lot of to hold on to, a lot of it I gave to you know what as far as the villa, as far as all the possessions in there, there really wasn't much to be saved. Every single thing in that house was filthy and dirty and disgusting. Top and bottom. 
There was nothing of true value in that house because it all got ruined. Ugh. That's why she was like, oh, I'm going to leave it behind. I'm not even going to try to sell it. There was nothing worth really selling. Like I had my family and people I knew come and pick up whatever they wanted. Um, but a lot of it I gave away or um, my mom helped me take like a couple carloads to the value village up the street. You did not. Please tell me that didn't really happen. You did not gather up all those filthy, nasty, disgusting clothes and take them to Value Vi Village. They can't take clothes in that condition. If they are filthy and nasty and they smell, they can't sell that. Tell me, please tell me you put that stuff in the garbage. Um, and a lot of it I just left. I told the manager, I said, do you mind? Like, you, you guys can just keep everything, so... Why is she talking like her name was on the lease? She probably didn't even talk to the manager. Pete's name was on the lease. Pete's was the one who was legally responsible for the villa. He was the one who put his name on the dotted line, not Chantal. She was a guest in the house, but she was never on the lease nor financially responsible for anything. That's why when she decided to hightail it over to Kuwait, Pete was left holding the bag and all the expenses that came from the repairs. I heard that Pete's owed somewhere in the neighborhood of $5,000 plus for all the damages. Chantal always makes sure that if she moves in someplace that she's not legally responsible. And that's why she feels so free to do all kinds of damage. Because if she does damage, she doesn't have to pay for it. Anime sucks. My idea of a good day. I clean and order food while you catch up on your emails and watch your favorite show. Cool. Like I'm sure whoever the property manager was, just to make that place livable, they had to rip up all the carpet and the padding because the poor cats had to pee and poop on the carpet since their litter boxes were dirty. The plumbing had to be repaired. Maybe a new refrigerator. The kitchen tile was damaged. She was smoking and doing party favors in the house, which means they had to sanitize uh, the walls and get the chemicals out of the paint and then do a complete repaint of top and bottom. I mean, that's that's a hefty bill. And that's not even counting moving out all the furniture and the trash. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. Thank you. <laughs> and cleaning out the puke in the vents, which I think is so incredibly foul to leave that behind. <laughs> I have PC. I should do a Beezer dating service. All of you guys who are single can like, you know, including your cats. Yeah. Yes, I rehomed my cats. I hope I get Sam back someday. Oh, stop it. P can we please just move on from that, Chantal? Let's move on. Stop talking like that. You're never going to get the cat back. I don't know why you think that's still a talking point. Why you think that anybody, reactor, girl world, anybody in your audience will believe you're getting Sam back because you're not. Sam is gone. Sam is with another owner. Thank goodness for that. There's another person around you. They got Sam. They did the damn thing. They pay for the vet bill. They got him shaved down to get all the mats out and all the dander out. They're taking care of him. And no one who spends that kind of money on a cat is going to give it back to the original neglectful owner. No, it don't work like that. So stop talking about Sam. Stop talking about BBJ. You let them go. You made the decision to go to Kuwait. It's a done deal. You shouldn't even have the pets that you've got right now. You get them as props for your show, but not because you love them. But my stuff, go, go to the Goodwill, the Value Village. You might see something there. <laughs> One moment, y'all. Okay, sorry, guys. I have to turn on the AC. It is boiling in here. I'm sitting here sweating. 
and I don't want to be uncomfortable and I don't want booger to be uncomfortable. It's 91 degrees outside. It's a lot hotter than that inside. So I am so sorry if the you got the extra ambiance of the AC unit. It's right above my head, but I have to have it on to complete this react. So there's a little extra noise. Apologies, but I got to have it on or I can't finish this. All right, let's keep going. The wigs. <laughs> You're my favorite hot mess back then. Yeah. I know. I didn't like being a hot mess. You did too. You loved it. You loved all the attention and you certainly loved the extra money in your paychecks, girl. What are you talking? I hated it. I hated it. But yet she was doing all kinds of stuff to keep girl world focused on her. That's how much she hated it. I did, but I didn't, you know. The giraffe. You're single, Zainab? Thank you, uh, Anime Sucks, by the way. I was in chat for CPAP Rescue. How many people were watching? Like A lot. A thousand? A couple thousand? I didn't even notice. I was so mad. I was so, like, pumped on adrenaline. And other things, too. It wasn't just adrenaline in your system. It was the powder. You guys didn't see, the thing that bothered me is you guys didn't see what that friggin' swordfish psycho fucking abuser was doing behind the scenes. You didn't see him like threatening to kill me. Like, I'm so tired. I am so tired of her just, look, I'm not on Natter's side. I never will never be on Natter's side. But I just want to point this out. This woman is a predator. And she likes to paint a one-sided picture of she's the victim and the hero of every story. But she was the victim in the Natter story. Oh, woe was me. Natter did all these awful things to me. And yet you cannot forget this woman. She always had the option to stop talking to him and stop seeing him. Every time she saw him, she had to go over to his house. He didn't even have a car. She had her own place. She had her own money. She had her YouTube channel. If she did not like being around Natter, or if he made her uncomfortable, if he hurt her, she could have just not gone over there. Just stayed away. Even when Natter moved to Montreal to be with Dee, she would make the drive to Montreal to go see him. She was sneaking off in motel and hotel rooms to be with this abusive man this alleged abusive man he went from Gatineau to Montreal to get away from her and she still followed him to Montreal so who's the abusive one she's obsessive she's clingy she's jealous she's insecure she sucks all the oxygen out of the room she wants to just come into your life and take over your life and tell you what to do and make you codependent on her. And she wonders why men can't stand her after a while. When I'm like, just let me, like when I was pissing him off, he was like, like doing things like this. Like he's psycho. I wish I would have shown that, but I didn't switch the camera over. I kept it on me because it was really fast, but were you <laughs> team foodie? No, I wasn't on coke, actually. Lies, lies. Can't believe a word you say. I was, I was like straight then. No, you weren't. I just, we just saw the clip in the Amber React where you were talking about your habit and you were addicted to the powder. You said it outright. So I watched that and I was so scared for you. I wanted my CPAP. No, you didn't. Because anybody who was around during the Natter era, more than once, Chantel would make a big to-do about her CPAP machine. And for anybody who wants to know, needs to know, Chantal had two, two CPAP machines. So even if Natter had one, she had a spare. So it wasn't like she was going without her CPAP. And there were occasions that she would go to Natter's place and not take her CPAP with her. And that's on her because that's a medical device. 
but it, it, obviously it wasn't that important to her. But she would make a big to-do about the CPAP machine, not because she wanted it, not because she needed it, but she just had to get into his house. She wanted an excuse to get into his house and bother him and walk in the place and see if Dee Dee's there and persuade him to let her stay. It was all about encroaching on his private space. And again, I'm not taking up for Natter. I'm just saying this is what was going on. She likes to take over somebody's private space and not leave. But I have to have it, right? You know. So to keep it, it's freaking stupid. And then whenever, like, I called, whenever the police came and they're like, you have to give her CPAP back, the friggin' loser gave it back, but he didn't give me back my charger for it. Or there was like a piece missing and it was broken. Like the knob was broken off. He broke it. Like that's something I need to fucking live, you know? So, yeah. But I have my CPAP. I have the same CPAP. It's going strong. It's been to many different countries. Got blocked because I said he had summer teeth. Some are here, some are there. <laughs> well, now we can laugh at it. I really don't know what the hell I was. I was blind. Blind. Ew. I always hit that fucking curve. So <laughs> what I do? The one at the drive through Oh, it was my hose? I thought it was my charger. I don't know. You know what, Chantal? Look, I, I'm not encouraging you to go out, go back to Canada, and do chemicals, and go full feral wild. But look at you right now. People are mentioning that era and how they missed that era because it was spontaneous. It was fun. And just you talking about it, you're getting a sparkle in your eye. Like, you're laughing and giggling about it. Like, you know, it was fun for you, too. And yet you won't go back to Canada. Where you have more freedom and you could be your, your entire self. You insist on staying in Kuwait and portraying a version of yourself that is total opposite to what you actually are. And insist on making yourself miserable just because you don't want to eat the poo-poo from Girl World. Well, girl, you're going to eat the poo-poo from Girl World wherever you might go, whether it's Kuwait, whether it's Canada. We're going to give you crap. We are going to give you crap. It's just like, what makes the most sense? Does it make sense to stay in Kuwait and carry on with this thing? Or does it make sense to go home and take care of yourself and start over? Just because you didn't see any love bombing, trust me, there was a lot of manipulation going on. A lot. Yeah, well, a lot of manipulation going on from you, too. Don't leave yourself out of the equation. I was stupid, fucking blind and ri ridiculous, that's all. A goof, yeah. So, I'm glad those days are over and done. Yeah. Those live drives were the best <laughs> when they ran out of Nash. She's member. Yes, I'll have two Nashville chicken sandwiches, please. Sorry, they're discontinued. What? What? Anime sucks. You're spoiling me. And I absolutely would have beat the life out of your loser ex if you laid hands on you. Stay strong. Oh. She's got people in her chat so, so brainwashed. And you know what? I get it. Some people show up at the party late, so they have a different perspective and different knowledge than those of us that have been in the party just a little bit longer. But she's telling these, these wild stories about, oh, he was so bad to me. He was so abusive. And the people that she's speaking to, they, they've not been around as long, so they don't know. They don't know how crazy things were then, how bad she was. Uh oh <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> you know I'm married, right? <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and 
And thank you. Yes, I'm glad that, you know, I think any real man who sees a woman being um, beat on or knows a man who's a beater would probably kick his butt. That's for sure. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chats. I appreciate it. Was that Egyptian re restaurant actually good? Yeah, it was. It was really good. Yeah, I find that um, there's a lot of Egyptian restaurants in Montreal, like the fish, like the fish ones. They're really good. They make really good shrimp and stuff like that. And a lot of them here are Egyptian restaurants too, for like uh, moving on. miserable a lot of the time. And the worst part was is I couldn't figure out why like i couldn't see it like i couldn't figure out the cycle i was in like you know oh god are we doing this are we doing this i couldn't figure out the cycle that i was in i was being abused so bad you chantal you're a fake phony victim always have been you're not the real deal you're not you're just over there telling a story of being a victim, but telling a story of being a victim is not the same as really being a victim or a survivor. Because you haven't really been through that horrible experience. There's a lot of pieces missing from that puzzle. People who really are victims of SA or DV they want to get as far away from the person who hurt them as they can possibly get. They don't want to think of that person. They don't want to mention them in conversation or have a single thought of them. They don't want to go anywhere where they remember that person is. Like They, they don't want anything connected to any memory of that individual. And a real victim doesn't sit for hours on a live stream talking about whatever experiences they had. Because when you do that, if you've been through it for real, you're reliving it in your head at the same time. You're going backwards in time and remembering what happened to you and you're gonna have visceral reactions to that. Real victims, it's hard just to open up to one person and talk about it. You can't do it in front of a whole bunch of strangers And for someone who was so badly abused by Natter, you had no fear whatsoever of spending time alone with him in a motel room after these said allegations. That day that you went to the police, afterwards you went to his house with green products and coffee like a coffee date. You went to the police out of revenge in desperation because you were desperate for Dee Dee to go back to Montreal and you thought you could scare the crap out of her so she would leave and you could have Natter all to yourself. It wasn't about justice for wrong being done to you. It was about I'm desperate to make this other woman leave because I really want to be with this man. Because you're wrathful. And if you can't get what you want, you're going to wreck and ruin somebody. That's just how you play the game. But you're never a victim. The crazy part about you is that you cry victim when the truth is you make other people into victims and you are the freaking predator. Oh, like why I needed to feel like I needed to escape down the long road after just a couple of effing hours. You know, like I felt like I was going crazy. I watched the live streams. Never did I get a sense that Natter was holding her against her will. Like she, look, she would go over to Natter's place. She would get all gussied up, put on her makeup, uh, put the lingerie in the overnight bag, go over there. Before she went over there, she made sure to have the proper party favors, the liquor, the food, his groceries, possibly doing his laundry, but she made sure to have the party favors that was very important 
And she made sure after arriving to get herself so incredibly wasted that he couldn't send her home. She'd have to spend the night. That was her way of getting extra time with Natter. But in the morning, I never got a sense of Natter being up and forcing her to stay. Because she always got up, and as soon as she got up, she left the house, and she ran out to go get her Starbucks and go get her Nashies. And that was her routine. But I never got a sense that he was forcing her to stay against her will. So it was, for me, it was literally mentally breaking me apart. Like I Oh, shut the F up. It was mentally breaking me apart, but you, yet you kept going back over there. People who are mentally breaking apart, they don't go back to the person responsible for it. You literally did. I, I don't think I would be here right now, honestly. Like, What are you saying? Stop it. Like scarily, like if I kept going in that direction, like can you imagine? Like I would have been- She's really pouring it on, isn't she? She's really pouring it on. Look, both her and Natter were awful people. But Chantal herself has confessed that she is verbally abusive, and there's a possibility she might also be physically abusive as well. Brain down to nothing. I know it. So, yeah. Ramen omelet? I mean, for him being an abusive guy, she had absolutely no problem getting in his face, literally getting in his face and screaming at him. And if you've been through that kind of hurt, that's something you don't do if it's real. You don't want to provoke the person who's hurting you in any way. You don't even want to breathe wrong around them just in case they look at you funny. She had no fear of him. No, but that doesn't sound bad. That's what abusers do best. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Just like hours of like, and they like to talk and like. Like, how do I explain it? Like, it's draining being around them. Like, they're just always like. And it's not draining being around you. Oh, my God. Can you imagine Chantal spending the night with y'all? what that would be like how much of a drain that she would be on the system like dealing with her making you feel bad about yourself or something and yet you kept going back over there so make that make sense or like i don't know how to explain it just always like oh good fucking riddance <laughs> yeah i don't know i just didn't want to hear it you know Yeah, teardrop, I don't blame you. Yeah, it was sketch to begin with. <laughs> I should have known. Like when he got so mad because that time, he blamed me the whole time I knew him. So again, you guys are listening to her and you're watching her, right? So allegedly Natter hurt her and abused her. And she's remembering him and she's remembering these occasions of being with him. Do y'all see any kind of visceral outside physical reaction to remembering him where it hurts to remember? I don't see it either. Shouldn't that reaction be there? Hmm. And he kept going back to, I let the camera slip on purpose and showed everybody his face, his teeth, whenever, <laughs> whenever, whenever, the magic tricks and nobody was supposed to see him and i let it like it accidentally like my camera moved up and you saw his chompers yeah he was like so embarrassed you should be you should be embarrassed you're ugly as fuck and yet that was the person you wanted to claim you remember so you again i'm not taking up for natter i don't like him he's he's a scumbag but it's so funny that she insults people at the same time, you can easily throw the insult back at her. He's so ugly in his teeth and everything else. Meanwhile, she doesn't have perfect teeth. Meanwhile, 
those of us that were around, we remember that was the one that she was desperate to marry her, to claim her, to say that she was the girlfriend. She went out and got her own engagement ring. She took him to Montreal. She spent all kinds of money on him. She bought him an iPad, all kinds of food, paid his rent, paid the phone bill, paid for everything. You did all that, Chantal. And you know what? I'll bet dimes to donuts that if Didi were not in the picture, that if you were there with Natter right now, you would not be talking this way about Natter. You're saying it because it will forever be sour grapes that you could not have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Anyways. <laughs> Oh yeah, Barbara, when I found out, I was like, done. I And I found out from Sam's bar lounge. I didn't, I ignored all of the signs, seeing a pregnancy test in his bathroom. Um, Cause they denied it to the very end, denied it, denied everything, right? And I was stupid, I was effing, effing stupid. You know what's really sad is that she's sitting here talking about things that happened during crackhead Olympics. Like she's got a lot to say about that era. Because a lot of things did happen. But notice what she's not talking about. She's not talking about anything interesting going on in the present. Like she gets on camera and she's got nothing to say and there's nothing to do. People start talking about times gone past. And suddenly she's like all ears and she's talking about it. But then whenever it came out and I heard them talking in on Sam's Bar Lounge and it came out that, that you know that was happening i was like what the fuck like anyway that was it no i don't think it was like completely it because i was still like i still had feelings like they don't just go away that fast but it was like the beginning of the end yeah thank goodness and now there's like negative feel there's nothing it's like i'm disgusted like it's so opposite you know, so the best thing, falling in love with someone else and, you know, they have to weaken you to overpower you. <laughs> Noshville chicken sandwich. <laughs> oh, my God, you guys are mean and I love it. Uh, Nicholas's fault. No, it's Frank's fault. Remember? <laughs> yeah, I remember Frank. For those who weren't around during that period, this was before Natter, and I don't know if it was being around Frank that made Chantal boy crazy, but what happened with Frank? Frank was a guy that, as I understand it, was a co-worker of Pete's, and it was set up that Chantal would meet up with Frank, and he would get her like a, like a, like a bubble tea or something. So it was really weird that night. Like Chantal was in the car doing a live stream. Frank got in the car with a bubble tea, gave it to Chantal. And the entire time Frank was looking at the live chat, he wasn't even looking at Chantal. He was all about just looking at himself. It was just, it was a weird night, trust me. And then after that, she just went full strength, full throttle with looking for a man. It probably was another woman, not her. Yeah, exactly. Because he would say that. He's like, do you honestly? He's like, because I questioned about the pregnancy test. And he's, he's like. Okay, this is all past stuff. Like, is there anything else, please? Yeah, well. Uh, How much time has she spent talking about Natter? This is not mentioning Natter in passing. Like, it's been more than five minutes. How can she sit there and talk about him? for more than a couple of minutes and, and she's perfectly fine if she allegedly went through abuse. <laughs> Peppermint Pixie. I don't know, Zainab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thankful for it. <laughs> yes, very thankful. <laughs> It's how we knew it was time for dinner. <laughs> so this is how we're ending the live stream. Like her laying down, looking ridiculous. 
<laughs> he said it was the milk. Should I leave? Oh my gosh, Golden Girl, yeah. Dr. Blackburn, you missed the seven layer burritos. And I shouldn't have eaten that. Don't talk about food. <laughs> Yoda, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? I really don't like the steel position. It bugs me. Let's just skip ahead. I'm sweaty. I'll be right back. Jessica! The brownie tray? Oh, it's blowing away. I gotta wrap them up. This is the brownies. So she ate a huge, she ate two huge burritos. Now she's gonna nerf a whole pan of brownies. There we go. There we go. There it is. What can you say? What is there to say? This is not a mistake. This is a choice. It's a bad choice, but it's still a choice. So you're making a bad choice right now, Chantal. Just like eating two big burritos was also a bad choice. But if you have a medical event, that's not going to be a choice. Because if your body decides it's had enough, you're not going to get the choice to stop it or to not stop it. It's just going to happen. Sarah? Well, you know what? I don't want to sit here and watch her eat her brownies. No, no, thank you very much. I don't want to watch her eat. I might be missing some good stuff, although I doubt it. But if there's anything good, I'll find it on Twitter and I will include it in with the next React video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.